What's up guys, in today's video I want to talk about my current top 5 builds to play in ranked and the current season for you to climb your ranks. At 5 we have Tyranitar, absolutely incredible Pokemon, probably the best late game Pokemon besides maybe like a Venusaur. It, it just, as soon as you get to level 13, 14, 15, it just feels like you win games. For the build we have either Ancient Power or Sandtomb, both are totally fine to play. It doesn't matter which one you go. Um, I personally prefer the Sandtomb, because I really like the Dark Pool Sandtomb combo, but Ancient Power is also still absolutely incredible. For head items, I'm currently running Muscle, Scope, and Rapid Fire. Very aggressive. You can also decide if you don't want to be this aggressive to go more tanky items, right? Maybe a Focus Band. Um, but besides that, Muscle Band, Scope, and Rapid Fire do absolutely insane damage. And they're also happy you get to late game because you can farm, you know, white Pokemon so much faster and also can take down objectives on your own much, much faster. For the battle item, you can go full heal, X attack, eject button, X speed. Honestly, all of those are totally fine to play. X attack is quite hilarious because it also works with rapid fire scarves, so you just stomp the ground with your night move a crazy, crazy amount. Now, you can play it in lane and jungle. It can be very rough to play in lane, but there's so many comeback mechanics in this game where I just lose games just because the enemy Tyranitar still got to level 13 and just runs over the game. That can happen still quite, quite easily. So, I obviously, I would prefer playing it in jungle if you really want to, uh, but you can give it a latent try if you don't feel like it's working for you. You should probably just give up on it. But it's such a strong Pokemon that just is so, so hard to deal with. On number four, we have Azumarill with the Aqua Tail and Water Pulse build. It's still such an amazing Pokemon for laning phase. After you get to level four, which you just, your goal is to get level four, you get Aqua Tail and you start dominating every single lane. It is such an incredibly strong early game Pokemon. You get to unite with on level eight as well, which is pretty much always guaranteed when you lane that you get it for the first objective. Getting level eight is super, super easily. And you can just take over games. What Aqua Pulse and Water, Aqua Tail and Water Pulse do incredible damage together. For the head items, we play Scope Lens first, always Scope Lens and then Attack Bait. Attack Bait increases our damage by quite a lot. And for the last item, you can either go Drain Crown, you can go Weakness Policy, or you can go Muscle Bed. I think all of those are totally fine items to play in the third slot. I tried some Drain Crown and it also felt quite good because you heal in a crazy amount with it. And for Emblems, we just go 6 Brown, go some HP, right? Battle item, full heal. Is a good choice. X speed is a good choice. I think I would go one of those two, preferably. I just played a lot of pull here lately because of Sableye, who slowly, not too many people are playing Sableye anymore, so I think you can slowly go back to maybe some X speeds. And again, our goal is just win lane. You can also play it in jungle, but I would mainly recommend playing it in lane. And um, that's just where it shines truly, but it can also be played in jungle. Almost, I mean, almost any damage Pokemon can be played in jungle and do quite well, right? And then the gameplay is just we throw out our Aqua Tails, try to keep our opponents in this last zone. So we start healing and then we just keep Water Pulsing around and make those Water Pulse bounce. Water Pulse damage is actually one of the most, like, things people don't notice. It does so much damage across the game by just, you know, having that Water Pulse bouncing between your opponents. At number three, we have a build that I think a lot of people are underestimating, which is Ice Even Glaceon. This build is so incredibly strong. It does so much damage. You can one-shot a lot of squishy with it with one free strike and icy wind combo. It has a lot of mobility thanks to icy wind as well, combined with the damage you literally can't miss, right? As long as you icy wind someone, they're gonna get hit. You don't have to hit any skill shots. For this build though, we need a level 30 shell bell, at least the way I play it. Level 30 shell bell, level 30 energy amp, and we need seven black emblems and blue buff. So we kind of want to play this in jungle. I don't know if you can try playing the lane. If you go to lane, you might want to go different hit items then. Um, or you can just try to, you know, maybe get a blue buff once in a while, and the blue buff will help you to have permanent icy wind stacks with this build. Level 30 shell, level 30 amp, and so on. For eject button, or for a better item, we go eject button. I kind of like it the most. You can also just have on full here. Eject button just allows me, because you can see I'm jumping in very aggressively all the time. You can see this damage this Pokemon does, right? It's absolutely hilarious. And eject button just allows us to have another safety tool in case we jump in too far, right? Because we want to be aggressive with our jump. We want to jump in onto our opponents and de damage that way. So we go into bad positions and just allows us, you know, to do stuff. But again, I would probably prefer playing it in jungle. You can try playing the lane. It can be quite difficult because it's also the worst EV out of all the EVs. At number two, we have one of my favorite bits in the entire game, which is Flame Charge Mystic Affair Death Fox. I think people, like, it's, it's catching on. So many more people are playing this build because it's absolutely ridiculous how much it does. You have so much mobility, so much damage. You are hard to catch. A lot of times, really, it, it, you can chase anyone down. The only thing is, you need to get to level 11 fast. Level 11 is where this Pokemon really starts to shine. You can play it in jungle mainly. It's mainly a jungle Pokemon, but you can also try it in lane, but lane can be quite, quite difficult. Because you're not really a Pokemon until, like, level 6. So it can be quite rough to play with, but as soon as you get to level 7, where you get your Flame Charge, and you get to level 11, where you get Mystic Fire Plus, you will be an absolute menace. Mystic Fire Plus, just as soon as we hit it, both of our cooldowns are getting reset. Like, we get cooldown reduction on both of our moves, 
which allows us this permanent dashing, right? So we run a Shale Bay, Energy M. I'm currently trying Choice Packs as well over Body Barrier, just for even more damage, more burst damage. Also helps our early game a bit, so in case you play lane, Deathhawk, I would recommend Choice Packs, because the Ember with Choice Packs will deal extra damage to minions, so you can get hopefully some last hitting done if Choice Packs is up and proc for it. For our emblems, we just run six green, seven black, very standard. We want to have full cooldown reduction as much as we can, so we can permanently mystic fire flame charge in their game, and the opponents literally cannot get away from it. And for battle item, I'm currently running full heal, and you can also run eject button. Again, we have so much mobility. It's kind of similar to Ice and Glacier because we kind of jump in forward a lot as well. The eject button can help us, but if we get stunned one time or unite move gets interrupted, it can be quite difficult. And the unite move is also what makes Dale Fox so strong. You pretty much in solo queue, you win by just getting KOs, right? And just being in every team fight sometimes. And Dale Fox is the one Pokemon that can literally participate in every single team fight because its Unite Move has the lowest cooldown out of every single Unite Move in the game. It's pretty much permanently up. You can go to one fight, you farm four or five minions, it's up again, you go to the next fight, you can Unite Move, Unite Move, Unite Move, and it makes the Pokemon so incredibly strong. And currently sitting in the first place, I would say, is Duraladon. Can be played both in lane and jungle. Obviously, jungle is always better, but can be totally played in lane. Rapid Fire Scarf. I mean, even last patch, Duraldon was already sitting at first, but now its win rate went even more up thanks to the Rapid Fire Scarf. It makes its damage absolutely ridiculous. Rapid Fire Scarf on this Pokemon is not a fair item. The amount of damage you do is absolutely crazy. You can destroy every single objective like it's absolute butter. You can even destroy Rayquaza as soon as two or three of the enemies are dead. You can make Rayquaza disappear in just a few seconds. Like, it's absolutely crazy how much damage this Pokemon does. Drang Tail is also great mobility. We will always trade Drang Pulls and Drang Tail. That's the best build. We get our Drang Pulls stack so fast done thanks to our attack speed. Our Drang Tail gives us great mobility against anything that wants to die fast, right? Also gives us some more burst damage. And then for health items, we play Muscle Band, Scope Lens, and again, Rapid Fire Scarf, right? We don't play any defensive items. We want our full damage items. Scope Lens does incredible damage. Muscle Band does incredible damage. And Rapid Fire does incredible damage. We want those items. And for emblems, we just play Six Brown. And then do you look for any crit emblems. Or any, so we don't play red emblems anymore because thanks to rapid fire scarf, it doesn't work anymore. So red emblems are useless now. So there are six brown and then any crit emblems or flat attack emblems you can find. So just flat attack or crit, right? Crit obviously the best because this crit just do crazy amounts of damage. If boosted auto attack, if it crits, does percentage damage. And this can crit as well, which means that you do an insane amount of damage on your boosted auto attack. And if it crits, it does even more. So you really, really want to crit as much as you can. For better item, we will play full heal. Thanks to his Unite move being super easily cancelable. In team fights, you kind of just want to use your full heal to get your Unite move out. Because if Unite move doesn't come out, it can be quite, quite rough to play. So we kind of activate our full heal. Or oh, this right here. Perfect example. This happens. My full heal wasn't up, and I somehow just get Q charmed. I think Draladon Unite is probably the most interruptible Unite in the entire game. So full heal kind of just makes sure we get it. And we have mobility thanks to Drain Tail, so we don't really need the eject button. If you want to be very aggressive and you have like a Blissey or something as your Duke, your partner, you can also fully go into a X attack and do even more damage. It's actually hilarious how much X attack Draladon does. And now I also have two honorable mentions that are not in my top 5, but also very, very strong in solo queue, which is first off, Big Blow Oshifu can be played in lane and jungle. Lane can be difficult sometimes getting to level 5, but as soon as you get to level 5, it's an absolute monster. In jungle, obviously, you get to level 5 very fast, which means you can take over games super, super fast too. It's incredible for solo queue. I currently run a muscle band, a tech bait, and a scope lens. Sometimes floats on instead of scope lens as well. Also totally works. It does so much damage, it can secure objectives, right? Big Blow has insane last hitting. I've gotten a lot of Rayquazas, um, where people just try to flip it with it, thanks to Big Blow just doing a crazy amount of damage. And it can also target the enemy carry, right? If the enemy carry, let's say they have like a Cinderace or something, or, I don't know, Greninja, and they don't have full heal, we can just target them with our Unite move, and they're going to die instantly, right? There's nothing they can do about it. You can only full heal out of it, so you can always pick an opponent on the enemy team and pretty much one-shot them, which means you know, the team fights already won less, you know, at Rayquaza or something. So incredible damage. And for emblems, we play just brown and HP. Brown and crit is also totally fine. And for better item, X speed, eject button, full heal, X attack are all fine items. I kind of switch them around depending on how I feel or how my mood feels like. So another great Pokemon. And for the last honorable mention, we have Scyther. I don't want to recommend Scyther too much because he's quite difficult to play. But this Pokemon has become very strong on the current patch. It's getting a lot of popularity and a lot more people are playing it. It works both in lane and jungle. I laned a lot with this Pokemon and it goes very well. You just need level 5. Your early game is also quite strong with your early moves. You have good last hitting, you have good early game damage. And after level 5, you do really, really a lot of damage and have insane mobility. It's similar to Ushifu as well. You can target one of your opponents with your Unite move and just kind of delete them. 
That's why a lot of these Pokemon also just super, super good for solo queue, because you can just pick out the best Pokemon on the enemy team and delete them through the game and the late game team fights. For the build, I'm currently running a Muscle Band with Razor Claw and Attack Mate. So a lot of damage items with brown and crit emblems on top of it, plus my auto attacks if they crit deal an insane amount of damage. I'm also currently playing Sword Dance. I think double hit is also totally fine. Um, uh, but I really like the Sword Dance because it increases our damage by quite a lot. In case you know, Sword Dance just increases our attack damage, right? So together with an attack weight and Razor Claw, our damage becomes quite, quite insane. So if you activate Sword Dance, also unite with one someone, we just delete pretty much any squishy there is if you use it correctly. And for Battle Item or Eject, I'm currently using Eject Button as well on this Pokemon. I think we can play Full Heal too. It's either Full Heal or Eject Button. Um, I like, kind of like the Eject Button because we're very squishy. So if we use our Dual Wing Beat or something to go in, I kind of want maybe something to go back out as well again. And the Eject Button just allows us to do that. So again, can Jungle and can Lane totally well. So very flexible Pokemon right now. Um, is it better than Scizor? I think both are pretty much the same, but Scyther just has much more carry potential thanks to having just incredible amounts of damage output, right? Like he has mobility, a lot of damage. Late game can be quite difficult. That's the only thing where Scyther kind of struggles at. This early and mid game is crazy. Late game can be difficult. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what your top five would be in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.